What was the aim of today's meeting? Well, we were trying to pull together experts who were looking at NF and low-grade gliomas in different ways, both looking at adult and pediatric tumor, to look at commonalities and differences, to see with the new data that's emerging whether we could develop new therapeutic strategies for these patients. There's a lot of data that's been produced, you know, lately from different projects that, um, have, you know, look at low-grade gliomas. Why do you think today is, is a good timing for, you know, studying and looking at different aspects of treating low-grade gliomas? Well, the, there are multiple efforts underway, some led by the Ch Children's Tumor Foundation through their new uh, low-grade glioma activities that allow for the first time a number, a large enough number of specimens to be gathered to try to draw some conclusions about the molecular differences of these tumors. And where we initially thought, especially in pediatrics, that the tumor was very homogeneous molecularly with few other concomitant mutations, the information coming out in young adults is remarkably different with 40 to 50 percent of patients who have neurofibromatosis and other mutations that really may be important in whether they'll respond to therapy or how aggressive the tumor is or actually if the tumor is going to be life-threatening for them. And that's something we really didn't understand that the Lucinidos efforts that were pulled out by Dr. Ayavarone in, in some of his work in young adults with uh, NF and low-grade gliomas and also the great breakthrough work of David Jones and Stefan Pfister in Germany for their cohorts. So these are very important things, and they were a little bit surprising, the incidents, the types of mutations that were found, but they also opened a new window of understanding why some of those patients didn't do well and why some could be th therapeutically, hopefully, handled differently. So what do you think uh, in the next few years, how will change how we actually manage local gliomas in NF1? I think that, that right now we were way already well underway for the younger patients to try to move away from chemotherapy to move towards biologic therapy, especially the MEK inhibitors. That work is moving on. Some of the new insights molecularly help support that work, but we were already moving in that direction. For the older patients, there's increasing recognition that many of them don't do well, that we were not as knowledgeable as we should be about their molecular makeup, and the new molecular makes up, makeup give us new ideas of how to better approach these patients, maybe with combination molecular targeted therapy, and also how we might be able to unleash the immune system on these tumors and sort of control them in an immunotherapeutic way. These, these ways may not be mutually exclusive. We may be doing multiple different things for those patients in the very near future. And our goal with this meeting was to expedite and facilitate those thought processes so we won't be doing this in 10 years, but we'll be doing these new therapies in a year or two as the information becomes available.